Good afternoon, Tiger fans. We are live from Trinity University Football Stadium in San Antonio, Texas, where the 23rd-ranked Trinity Tigers look to remain undefeated against the Millsaps College Majors. I'm Brian Yanselson, and I'm joined by Luke Terry. Luke, the Tigers put up an impressive 27-7 victory at home last week over center, who was also undefeated at the time. What do you think the Tigers will take from that big win as they suit up for another home SAA matchup? Well, Brian, I think what we saw come to fruition in that last game was something that we've talked about a lot with Coach Urban in our meetings those, these last couple of weeks. It was the fact that when the Tigers go out, they play their style of football and take care of their own business that more often than not, they're going to come out on top. And that has proven to be the case even against the best competition in the conference two weeks ago at Berry College and last weekend here against Center. So if they do the same today, I think they have a great chance to come out on top. But the other aspect of what Coach Urban preaches to us every single week is that they need to not take take their opponents for granted. And that's a great example right here against Millsaps back in 2018. Here at Trinity, the Tigers were shocked by this Majors team. This is a Majors team that on paper, you look at their 1-4 and four record, you don't really give them a shot in this one, but they've shot themselves in the foot with penalties, with turnovers, allowing opponents to capitalize on those turnovers. So if the majors can play a clean game here in San Antonio today, it's going to be interesting to see what the ultimate outcome is. Absolutely, Luke. And you mentioned that 2018 matchup that Millsaps was able to upset Trinity in with a 10 to 7 victory. Have to say the weather conditions out of this world different between that game and today we have a beautiful day here in san antonio 71 degrees and sunny that day in 2018 it could not stop raining and the field at that time was muddy and torn up all over the place but today we are playing on turf we are playing in perfect conditions and both teams are just about ready to go this is a matchup between two teams that are very familiar with one another. 41 matchups between these two schools going back to 1974. Millsaps leading the all-time record 22-19 and against Trinity. And Ethan Claypatch ready to kick this one off between the Millsaps Majors and the undefeated Trinity Tigers. This one bounces in front of and then past Chris Stewart. And so that'll be a touchback for the Tigers. Now, Brian, we're going to get to see this Tiger offense get the day started against a Millsaps Majors defense that's really struggled on the year, giving up 458.8 total yards per, per game including 266 rushing yards. That's one of the worst stats in the country among D3 teams I know off the top of my head. Yeah, and they allowed over 600 yards of offense last week to Barry. Barry, a school that Trinity was able to beat on the road in a big victory for them over the defending conference champion. Millsaps has gotten an SAA victory under their, their belt. They defeated Rhodes in their opening match. Trinity 2-0 and in SAA play with victories over Barry and Center. And so far what we've seen from the Tigers, Brian, has been a really balanced approach on offense. So coming into this one, knowing that they're going to be more than capable of running the ball against this defense, it's going to be interesting to see how things change, knowing the fact that Coach Urban is really harped on controlling football games, taking advantage of time of possession, as we've seen the last couple of times out. And on the first play of the game, Tucker Horn hands it off to Hutchison, the lead running back for the Tigers, who has had a great start to the year. That first carry goes for about five yards. Horn once again hands this one off to Hutchison, and he breaks through that defense, and he is off and running at the 10, and he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. 
Hutchison with the touchdown, breaking through on just the second run of the afternoon. And Luke, you mentioned this run defense for Millsap struggling so much all year. The Tigers taking advantage of that early. Yeah, and what I noticed on that play right there was the fact that the Majors have three down linemen, and it seems like they're going to need to figure out a way to occupy more offensive linemen for Trinity at the point of attack. And as you get a look at that replay, Hutchison going untouched from the line of scrimmage all the way to the end zone. And so couldn't ask for a better start if you're the Trinity Tigers. P.J. Hensley on for the extra point, and that is good. So a quick 7 to nothing lead for the Tigers. We'll take a quick break on Tiger Network. Well, we hoped you tuned in right on time as the Tigers wasted no time getting up on the scoreboard, already up 7 to nothing. Luke, what did you see on that touchdown from Hutchison? Well, Brian, as I touched on right before we went to break, I noticed the fact that the Majors are playing with just three down linemen. And with the offensive line for this Tigers team, as physical as they are, I have to figure that they're not going to struggle blocking those three and that really easily they're going to move to the second level. So for the majors, they're going to need more bodies on that point of attack, whether it's four down linemen, maybe going all the way up to five. They're, need, they're going to need to occupy those Tiger offensive linemen, hopefully free up some of their linebackers. Those are some of the best players on this defense. Brian Patterson, Josh Smith, two guys leading this team in tackles, 25 respectively, each have 16 solo tackles. They're going to need to step up and play a big part in this game. Millsaps on the field with their offense for the first time. They run the ball. That's Montrell Felix going for about a gain of five. And you'll notice number 10 at quarterback, an unexpected starter today. That's Melvindrick Johnson the junior from Memphis, Tennessee. The Majors had seen Caleb Tom Thompson starting at quarterback thus far this year. In fact, Thompson was the SAA Offensive Player of the Week for his performance against Rhodes in Week 1 of conference play. But Thompson not starting today. Instead, it is Johnson who's back to pass. And he completes that pass across the middle for a first down. And two things that you figure this Majors team is going to have to do to have success against this Tigers defense, Brian, is run the ball outside of the tackles, as they did on first down, and take advantage in the short pass game, something that we saw center have success with early on in the game last week. Already a first down here for the Majors. Good start to the game for them offensively. Johnson gets rid of this one quickly, and he finds another completion that goes for a good yard, good eight yards there. So a couple of good completions here from Johnson, the unexpected starter. And another thing, get Johnson into a rhythm early on here. These are easy pitch and catch throws for the Tigers. They don't want to allow him to gain this confidence, gain any traction in this game. A second and two here for the Majors. Johnson back to pass once again, this time faces some pressure. Do it nearly getting to him. Instead, it's intercepted by Jeremy Irving there. And Irving returns it to Millsap's 42-yard line. A great play there by the defensive back for the Tigers. We're going to see on this replay right here, this ball is just a little bit underthrown. Not typically going to result in an interception. That's number 81 for the Majors right there. Mozi Tezo, who is 
you know, Jeremy Irving comes through his back a little bit, but times that up, times that one up really well, plays that one perfectly, batting it up in the air so he can get a clean, clean grab at it. And Tezzo, the Millsaps Majors leading receiver on the year, and also who completed that earlier first down conversion. And that's who Thompson Johnson was trying to get to. But you see that ball tipped up in the air and intercepted by Irving. So the Tigers offense right back out there. A penalty driving them back to their own 42. The penalty was on the return. So the interception, of course, standing. And Horn once again hands it off. So we haven't seen Tucker Horn back to pass quite yet. Hutchison's shoe coming off of that handoff. Already lots of running. You can see his shoe's not quite being able to take it. Second and eight for the Tigers. Caleb Crawford comes in motion. And Horn, back to pass, has plenty of time. And is unable to complete his first pass of the day. Trying to get Justin Carmouche there on the sideline who was trying to break free after Horn had plenty of time but then started facing some pressure near the end of the play. Yeah, Brian, that's something that we've seen this offense take advantage of numerous times. Stucker Horn does a great job going all the way through his progressions and eventually finding his running back more often than not wide open down the sideline. That was Josh Smith out there in coverage who picked up Carmouche down the left side of the field. And now they have the Tigers back in a third and long. Millsaps showing some pressure here on third and long. Horn hit as he throws, but he's able to complete that pass to Austin Burtness, who was across the first down marker when he first caught that. And it appears he fought through that contact to get the first down for the Tigers. So a nice completion there from Horn to Burtness for the first down. And Brian, a theme that we saw a lot last week recurring here already on third and longs, on fourth downs, the Tigers not being too greedy and getting exactly what they need, getting right to the sticks and nothing more. But a nice job there by Burtness, who would have been short if he had not fought for that extra yardage as he came back in front of the first down marker, even though he had the first down when he first caught the ball. Horn finds Stewart for a short completion. Second down and five for Horn. And Brian, in this second drive, the Majors have made a change defensively. You see five down linemen, and they're doing a much better job in defending the run right now. Yeah, definitely the best they've done defending the run that time as Hutchison tried to get towards the outside, but instead he was met by several Millsaps defenders and brought down for a loss of four. So another third and long for the Tigers. They just completed a third and eight. This time they have a third and nine. Hutchison in the backfield with Horn. Four wide receivers. Stewart comes in motion. And Horn looking that way. Has to scramble out of the pocket. Nearly brought down there, and now he will be brought down for the sack. So Horn only able to get away for so long. That is Osiris Jackson, the freshman from Pearland, Texas, that's able to bring down Horn behind the line of scrimmage. And Millsaps coming out with a big stop, not allowing Trinity to get out in front too early here. Yeah, and a really, really important stop right there. Last week, we saw the Tigers go up 14-0 on center. Really important for the Majors to stay within a one-score game for as long as possible. Hopefully be able to move the ball down the field again like they were before they got picked off on their last drive. Gaiman able to get this one away. And it is bobbled there, but somehow maintained nearly disaster for the majors 
but you've got Nick Hayes there, the senior wide receiver who also returns punts for Millsaps, able to come up with that after the bobble. Yeah, and with as many majors were on the line right there, there didn't look like there was going to be any opportunity for a return. A really risky play for the majors right there. Got to take advantage of every possession that, that they get. Like we said earlier in the broadcast, this is a team that struggled turning the ball over and allowing their opponents to capitalize on them. A fumble right there at the 10-yard line sets up the Tigers in really great real estate, and that's not, not something that the Millsaps majors can afford today. Montrell Felix gets this pitch from Johnson, but unable to go anywhere with that. Mentioned Melvindrick Johnson making the surprise start for Millsaps instead of Caleb Johnson. And he completed two of three passes on his first drive. Looked pretty good until that tipped interception caught by Jeremy Irving. And now two runs to start this drive. Not resulting in many yards for the majors, so they'll face a third and long here deep inside their own territory. Yeah, and certainly not a position that they want to be in. On that first drive, like we talked about, they had success outside the tackle. They had success in the short game. They're going to need to hammer those two areas of the game today if they want to have any success. In addition to that, they're going to need to hammer those two areas of the game to keep them out of positions like this, third and long, backed up, and they're part of the field. Johnson gets rid of it quickly, tipped once again, a dangerous throw from Johnson. This one falls harmlessly on the ground, but a three and out for the majors, and they'll be punting it back to the Tigers. Ethan Claypatch sends this punt away. Stewart back to receive it. Makes the first man miss. And then the punter, Claypatch, actually the one to bring him down. So Stewart with a nice return, getting into Millsap's territory. And the punter saving it from becoming more than that. You'll see on the replay. Stewart, who has been a reliable returner for the Tigers through all these years. Is able to make that first man miss easily. But you see 47 clay patch, the one to bring him down. So a nice job there. But Horn and the Tigers back on offense and from the opponent 35. Noble in motion. And Horn gets it, tries to get it to Legend Grigsby there on the outside, but that pass falls incomplete. So now the third man we've seen in the backfield and something Coach Urban talked a lot about, right, Luke? The depth that they have in their running back position group. Yeah, and what Coach Urban has harped on in regards to his running back is the different things that they bring to the table. And we've t seen and talked a lot about Winston Hutchison a lot early on this year and his capability as a three-down back as he moves forward in his career. Again, only a sophomore here at Trinity. Legend Grigsby in the backfield right now, someone that we've seen as he's been progressing through his transition from the wide receiver position. He's been really impressive. And Horn finds Stewart near the end zone, but that pass falls incomplete. Stewart looked to have a step on the defenders there, but the pass falling harmlessly. So the Majors forcing another third down here. And another third and long. So last one. They got pressure on Horn with four down linemen. They were able to drop enough men back into coverage. They covered well in the secondary. Can they do that here again? Looks like there's a lot of majors in the box right now. Be interesting to see who comes and who drops back into coverage. Grigsby in the backfield, just two receivers out wide, and it's Grigsby who gets the carry, but that's not going anywhere. And so the majors defense coming up with a stop there. It'll be fourth down. 
Tucker Horn doesn't appear to be going anywhere, though, so could be going for it here. Yeah, and what we saw a lot last week was the Tigers get in those third and medium third and long scenarios and know that they have two downs to pick up that yardage. Right there, I think they figured they'd be picking up more than one yard or just getting back to the line of scrimmage, and now there's going to be a decision that needs to be made right here. And Millsaps calls a timeout, so we'll take a quick break on the Tiger Network and be right back for this fourth down. Welcome back to Tiger Network. After that timeout, the Tigers still on the field with their offense on fourth and nine, so they will be going for it here. They're on Millsap's 34-yard line. And Brian, right here, we should watch number two, Austin Burtness, in the slot on the top half of the screen. One of Horn's favorite targets on the season, especially in downs like these. Horn is able to complete it across the middle to Ryan Merrifield. And so fourth and nine, no problem for Tucker Horn as Merrifield there wide open. And the completion gets the Tigers in the red zone and in position to score once again. Yeah, and a great throw by Horn right there. But as we mentioned before the play, Burtness still played a role in that one. Had a straight route up the seam right there, occupied the safety. And as Merrifield came across the middle, that left a hole right there in the zone. Burton is in the slot again. Stewart at the bottom of your screen. Merrifield at the top. Horn looking to Merrifield. Back of the end zone goes incomplete. Horn unable to get it to Merrifield. Looking for the consecutive completions there. When you see not much separation on the outside right there. Just a little bit of an overthrow by Horn. But would have had to be right on the money if that one was going to be completed. Got Stewart and Burtness at the top of your screen and Cole Monago in at receiver. Legend Grigsby in the backfield. Stewart going in motion. Horn looking that way and Stewart was there in the end zone but Horn unable to get it to him. And so a third and 10 coming up for the Tigers. A couple of missed opportunities here for the Tigers. They're, they're still looking to cash in here third and 10. And again, Another third and long scenario for the Tigers. Another scenario in which you have to believe that they have two downs to pick up a first down right around the three or four yard line right here. I would agree with you. Kicker P.J. Hensley has not been out on the field a whole lot. Just two field goals attempted in this, the fifth game for the Tigers. Grigsby trying to make that not matter, and he is able to rumble in to the one and get the first down for the Tigers. Legend Grigsby nearly getting into the end zone. You see Anton Noble right there, number 48, does just enough to seal off the end right there. Grigsby does his job in making the man from the second level miss, and the Tigers now down at the one-yard line feel like you have, they're going to punch it in right here. And Grigsby takes it outside, and no one touches him. Touchdown, Tigers though there is a flag out on the field late after Grigsby waltzed into the end zone, so we'll see what that call is. See on the left end of the line might be a hold right here against number 71. That's big John Hughes on the left side of the line for the Tigers. So perhaps a reason Grigsby went untouched into the end zone, that holding penalty will bring the Tigers back to their 11-yard line. Still first and goal.
horn to his right, completes it to Caleb Crawford, who completes the pass but not able to get much yard. A nice tackle there. That's Jordan Southers for the Millsaps Majors, the freshman from Biloxi. So a lot of youth on the field here for the Majors, something Coach Urban mentioned. Head coach for the Majors, Isaac Carter, just in his second year in his first full season. And so finally getting his own recruiting class down in Jackson. Grigsby runs into some men at the line and just gets to the five. So a third down now coming up for the Tigers after they appear to have their second touchdown of the afternoon. They'll have to convert it here on third or possibly fourth down. Got two receivers on each side of the field. Grigsby in the backfield. Horn pointing something out to Grigsby. And now Stewart in motion. Horn looking that way. It's Burtness in the back of the end zone. That pass falls incomplete. So the Tigers face another fourth down decision. And this time, Horn walking towards the sideline will get the field goal unit out on this one. And it's a great stand by the majors right there caught a little bit of a lucky break when they were down on the one yard line tigers not able to get back to that point but even though the defense bends a little bit right here and turns into a two score two score game much better position than being down 14 or even 21 nothing Hensley gets it away, and that field goal is no good. So the Majors not only forcing the field goal attempt, but coming up clean. No points for the Tigers. And Hensley now with his second missed field goal of the year. Some missed opportunities there for the Tigers to get on the board. Yeah, Brian, and still really early on in this one. But you look back at that game against the Majors here in 2018, and the way Coach Urban talked about it, how a drive that comes up empty like that can, can lead and snowball. So really important for the defense right here to step up, to get another stop, to allow the offense to go back out there and gain some momentum, gain some confidence. It's something that they were able to do last weekend against center after we saw that prayer go up result in, in a touchdown. Definitely some eerie parallels to that game. Urban also mentioning that the Tigers scored on just the fifth play of the game. And that caused his team to gain a false sense of confidence that then led to them losing 10-7, to not scoring any points after that opening drive. So Urban and his staff definitely don't want to see a repeat of that. But now for Millsaps, it looks like they're moving a little bit faster. And what we saw in their last drive was two runs that got stopped by this Tiger defense, something that we're used to seeing, and then a long third down that they weren't able to convert. For this majors team, if they're going to have to, ha if they're going to have success today, I think that they're going to have to mix things up a little bit. They can't use a cookie cutter offensive playbook, run the ball on first and second down, and throw on third. That's just not going to work. It's too predictable against a really good Tiger defense. They're going to need to switch things up and take shots on second down, like they attempt to do right here. And that Tiger defense you mentioned all over Johnson there, who gets a couple of yards, if any, just able to get back to the line of scrimmage. And a whole host of Tigers there to meet him. Johnson, a big quarterback listed at six foot three. He's going to need to recognize once plays have broken down, once he doesn't have an option downfield, that he's going to need to get yards wherever he can. He looked and held on to that one behind the line of scrimmage for just a little bit too long right there. You have to feel that if he had taken off a little bit earlier, he could have made this a more manageable third down. Third and six, Tiger sending pressure, and Johnson trying to step up in the pocket, but he isn't going anywhere. The Tigers coming up with the sack there. That's number 91, Carson Bird, whose name we called a couple of times last week. Came up with a sack and a half. And Carson Bird, part of this second, u second unit of defensive linemen, one of the most spectacular things about this box, about this front seven, is the depth that they have up front. 
we talked about Campbell Miller and Harris Good, but Carson Bird was a huge part of the victory last week and already making an impact early on when the Tigers needed to get the offense back on the field. Stewart goes back to the, receive this punt from Clay Patch and able to return it to about the 40-yard line. So the Tiger defense once again holding strong, keeping the majors off the scoreboard. And Brian, Chris Stewart coming into this game was only 23 yards away from becoming the 12th Tiger ever to hit the 3,000 or more all-purpose yards with two punt returns today. I'm sure that he's done that. So congratulations to Chris Stewart, who's already had a spectacular career and has a long way to go the rest of this season. Absolutely. Congratulations to Stewart on that milestone. Horn back to pass, and he looks for Burtness. And that pass incomplete. Some contact near the sideline. There's a flag down on the play. More than likely going to be defensive pass interference against number six from Millsaps. That would be Christopher Butler playing defensive back, playing corner. Well, there wasn't a whole lot of contact on that play right there. It looked like Butler failed to get his head turned around, and he kept moving through Burtness right there, and I think that's what drew the penalty flag out. Butler at six feet tall, going up against the six foot three receiver in Burtness. This ball handed off to Hutchison. Gets a nice gain there on first down and something we'll see if the Tigers go back to that running game on this drive they were able to score on just two runs in the first drive of the game Hutchison with that long run but since then Horn has attempted 10 passes completed just four of them and one of the big reasons that we've seen that so far Brian is the fact that the majors have moved this five down on the defensive line and the Tigers aren't getting the same type of push from that offensive line that we're used to seeing Butler much better in coverage right there. Pins Burtness to the sideline. But back to what we were talking about. That last run, it looked like Hutchinson was able to find a hole, and that's what the Tigers are going to need to do. These running backs are used to the offensive line getting a big push in front of them, remaining patient, and waiting until that offensive line has already moved three, four yards in front of them before they hit a hole. They're going to need to dance a little bit more in the backfield, hit a hole, and be satisfied with breaking five or six yard runs off right here. Third and three for the Tigers. Millsap showing some pressure, and they do send a blitz. Horn gets rid of it quickly, and Hutchison gets it and goes down the sideline, breaking free once again. Touchdown, Tigers. Hutchison coming through on third and three and getting his second touchdown of the afternoon. Right here you're going to see Merrifield with a little stutter, slants inside, occupies the cornerback, brings him with him. And the linebacker, who's just a step too slow, maybe gets picked by Merrifield just a little bit right there, frees up Hutchinson for the touchdown down the sideline, something that we saw week one against McAllister for the Tigers' first score of the year. And a great job by Hutchinson not stepping on the sideline, tiptoeing down the line and able to get it into the end zone. And if Hensley is able to make this extra point, which he gets away and is able to get through, the Tigers are up 14 to nothing. So Hutchison really carrying this offense so far today. He's got 75 yards on the ground and that long rushing touchdown. And now 42 yards receiving with that touchdown on third down. And Urban really has talked about how Hutchison, out of all of the running backs on the roster, the most versatile and the most like a three down back that can just do a little bit of everything. And we're definitely seeing that right now. Yeah, absolutely. Because we talk about his success as a running back, but we forget to mention the fact that coming into this game, in four games this season, he's had 10 receptions that have gone for 140 yards and two scores. So definitely a very versatile player, someone that they look to take advantage of in any capacity that they can because he's so explosive. He moves so well in the open field. He can break tackles. He can make guys miss. He's just the absolute complete player. and It's incredible to see that out of someone as a sophomore. 
especially for someone who has filled in for Carmouche, who was expected to start the year at the running back position, still working his way back from an injury. Hutchison stepping up and delivering for the Tigers as that kickoff is called for a fair catch. So the Majors will start at the 25, looking to get something going. Their defense doing a good job, even though they've allowed two touchdowns now, doing a relatively good job keeping the Tigers on hold, but the offense haven't seen much from them so far today. Yeah, and what we saw in that first drive was a couple of a couple of mid-sized pickups, essentially, right? We saw five-yard five yard gain, six-yard gain, seven-yard gain a couple times in a row, and they took a shot over the middle, got picked off by Jeremy Irving, who made a great read on the ball, broke on that play over the middle. We're going to have to see them return to that, be willing to pick up just some short chunk plays right here as they do to start this drive. Yeah, Johnson looks to just get the drive started with some positive yardage, and he does just that, getting that to the tight end, D.B. Bennett. A gain of about four. Just so hard to face this Trinity defense that ranks second in Division Three in scoring defense and total yards allowed. This run taken... Near the first down marker by Byron Phillips, the freshman from New Orleans, Louisiana. That'll put the Majors in a favorable spot on third and one. We'll see if they can convert this one. Yeah, Brian, inter interesting to see on that last run. Phillips cut back and picked up a block from his quarterback right there. Thompson, as we mentioned earlier in the broadcast, is playing in a really big frame. Quarterback standing out there at six foot three. We've seen him in some different capacities in his time at Millsaps. Not afraid to get out there and lead the way, put his nose into somebody for his running back. And the play clock there was getting down to one, and so the major is calling a timeout. Trying to think through this big third down play. We'll take a quick break along with them and be right back on Tiger Network. Welcome back to Tiger Network. The Majors are back on the field looking to convert this third and one. Johnson hands this one off and there's a big pile up near the marker but it does appear as though the Majors have the first down. So their first conversion since the first drive of the game. This will also be the final play of the first quarter. So that was Byron Phillips getting the first down, fighting for just that yard, just a little bit more than a yard to convert the third down. But the Tigers have to be feeling good about that first quarter. Tiger fans on their feet here in San Antonio. You can see 168 yards of total offense for Trinity compared to just 33 from Millsaps doing real damage both on the ground and in the air, thanks largely to Hutchison for the Tigers. And so we'll take a quick break and be right back for the second quarter from San Antonio. Here we go. 
after that third down conversion. Millsaps and Johnson trying to take advantage and gain some momentum. They'll run it on first down. Montrell Felix back in the game, and he gets a gain of about five. Yeah, Brian, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that last first down was one of the first since that first drive of the game when the majors got picked off. So important to go out and get another first down before they think about breaking things wide open right here, taking some bigger chunk plays. Yeah, and to be honest with you, every first down is something to celebrate against this Trinity defense who's tied for the fewest first downs allowed in the country, just 43 in this their fifth game of the year. And the Tiger defense and Harris good, not letting Melvendrick Johnson go anywhere on that pitch play, meeting him in the backfield and forcing a loss of five. Yeah, and a great play by the Tiger defense right there. Harris good breaking through and picking up his assignment. Looked like Johnson was ready to pitch it to his running back Phillips right there, but number 51, Michael Jewett, was right on his tail, so nowhere for that one to go for the majors. And now pushed back in a long third and 11. Johnson drops back to pass and he throws it deep and it is nearly intercepted once again by Jeremy Irving who already has one on the afternoon but that one falling just shy of his hands. Still the Tigers forcing a fourth down. Yeah and Brian on that one it looked like Johnson was looking that way the entire time was covered underneath and Caleb Harmel does a great job in coverage right there but Jeremy Irving was able to read the quarterback's eyes and almost came over, as you said, for his second interception of the game. And Irving doing a great job as someone who wasn't even supposed to start there in that position, Kennedy Stewart, the expected starter. But Irving filling in nicely, that's for sure. As Stewart lets that punt bounce, and the Millsaps punt coverage team gets to it. So Horn and the Tigers will come back out up 14 to nothing. And this feels like a big part of the game if you're Millsaps just trying not to let Trinity run away with this. Absolutely, and it's a similar position that we saw the Tigers in last week, up 14-0 against center. Center able to get back on the board, make it a one-score game again. So important for the majors to get back within striking range. Horn hands this first play of the drive off to Hutchison, who tries to break a tackle and is able to gain about four yards there. Already nearing the 80 yard mark on the ground is Hutchison on just six carries. Of course, had that long touchdown on just the second play of the afternoon. But Brian, good sign for this majors team. That means that the other five carries have only amounted for nine yards for Hutchinson, but he breaks off a big one here. Yeah, Hutchison so far today just doing a nice job breaking free. Already with two touchdowns, one in the air, one on the ground. And he'll get a little bit of a rest here. As you'll see number 31, Jathan Royal, who we saw a lot in the fourth quarter of last week's game against center and someone Urban is really excited about. He gets the carry here, bounces it on the outside and nearly breaks it free if not for that tackle. Yeah, very, Hamilton on the outside. Very interesting story with Royal Bryan, what Coach Urban told us in meetings, the time that he spent early this season on the developmental team, trying to give this defense really good looks, but just excelled, kept coming up in conversations amongst coaches and was able to see some action on the field late in the game last week. Obviously impressive enough to break in to the rotation earlier on here this week. Horn gets it to Royal who is wide open outside and he breaks a tackle and gets it all the way to the 15. So Royal, the big bruiser who Urban and the coaching staff have really liked as you mentioned in practice, breaking that pass free. There is a flag down on the field that came in once again a little bit late. So we'll see what that call is. Well, looks like it's going to be a block in the back on 
number 15, Cole Monaga, right there for the Tigers, actually blocked the major into making the tackle. So, unfortunate break for the Tigers right there. Didn't seem like it was entirely necessary on that play. Consolation at least. Still a first down for the Tigers and still some nice yardage. But not quite as far as it had gotten down to the 15 Royal on that nice reception and run after the catch. But just seeing even more of the depth at the running back position, Royal fights for a couple of yards there on first down. But you've got now Carmouche, who we saw, and Hutchison, of course, with the two touchdowns, Grigsby, and now Royal. And as a team that was worried about losing such a good running back in Michael Edmondson last year, doesn't seem to be a big hole with all of these running backs stepping in and filling the gap. Yeah, you're certainly right, and it's always nice when you have options. They have four running backs that you just mentioned, and they have four different types of running backs. Hutchinson, obviously someone that's been very successful. As Burtness goes up over the top of the defender to haul that one in, you see the penalty flag come down, but it didn't matter. An absolutely stellar catch by Austin Burtness, adding to his highlight reel on the season after we saw him haul one in and find the end zone with one hand last week. Yeah, and about the second or third time we've seen Horn trying to get it to Burtness, and this might be the second time it results in a pass interference penalty, but this time not making a difference. Burtness able to go over the top and make the catch anyway. But returning to the conversation we're having about running backs, Ryan, we talked about Hutchison also, his ability as a three-down runner. We've talked about So in fact, there are two penalties on Millsaps there, the pass interference as we expected, but the Tigers declining that one instead accepting the face mask, which gets the Tigers all the way down to the five yard line. Tigers in business here, and Burtness who made that great catch on the last play looks to have man coverage at the bottom of your screen. Horn looking that way and Burtness comes up with the catch and the touchdown. Austin Burtness dominating this drive and coming up with the touchdown to put the Tigers up three scores to none. Yeah, not a bad job defensively by the defensive back. Looks like that's number 21 out there on the outside, but just nothing that you could do right there against Austin Burtness. Big physical receiver standing in there at six foot three. He's athletic, he's quick, he's fast. He's been incredibly impressive for the Tigers so far this year. And an interesting decision here for the Tigers. Looks like they're going to try to go for two. Chris Stewart in motion. And Horn looking that way. But it's Burtness who makes the catch, bobbling it as he goes out of bounds. And the referees will call that incomplete as they come together to make that call. So 20 to nothing is the lead for the Tigers. You see the replay here on the attempted two-point conversion. Burton is going up, trying to make that catch, but makes it once he's out of bounds. Still a great drive for the Tigers. It results in six points, and they're up 20 to nothing and really starting to fill in that scoreboard as we expected. 241 yards of total offense. Millsaps with just 32 And Brian, we talked about in the opening on the broadcast today the fact that this is a majors team that has at times shot themselves in the foot this year, right? We saw the interception earlier on in this game, and it didn't result in points for the Tigers immediately. Honestly, the score that we're seeing right now isn't a reflection of this Millsaps team making mistakes. It's a reflection of the Tigers doing exactly what they need to do, coming into this game, taking care of business and the results showing. 
I think you're exactly right, Coach Irvin, making a point that this is the most important game of the season simply because it's the next game on the schedule. Tigers not looking ahead whatsoever to their schedule against Birmingham Southern, possibly at the end of the year. That could be a big matchup. Instead, focusing on this game against Millsaps and doing a good job putting it to the majors up 20-0 to with 10 and a half minutes left in the second quarter. The Tigers undefeated at 4-0 this year. One of 28 teams in Division Three to be undefeated still, and they are ranked 23rd due to that fact, finally earning their way into the top 25 according to d3football.com and the American Football Coaches Association. Also one of just seven teams across the entire state of Texas to be undefeated, two of which are right here in San Antonio, the UTSA Roadrunners 6-0 on the year. They play a big home game tonight against Rice, so some good football all over San Antonio. The Tigers' defense once again pouncing quickly on that run. That's number 90, Isaac Agumadu, the junior from Dallas, getting some playing time here and making that big tackle in the backfield. Yeah, now the Tigers' defense has really stepped up and they've limited every area of the game for this Majors team. It's going to be interesting to see what they're going to have to do to get back in this game. We talked about in the meeting with Coach Urban this week the fact that teams were going to have to tar have to start taking some shots, that they were going to look at box scores, they were going to look at defensive stats and recognize that this isn't a Tigers defense that they can run against. Johnson trying to find someone on the outside, but just nothing doing there in Irving. If that pass was anywhere near its target, was ready to take that back for a pick six. So Johnson lucky to sail that one out of bounds. Irving everywhere you turn today. Already with an interception, nearly came up with a second one. Now Millsaps facing a third and 13 from their own 17 yard line. We'll see if the Tigers bring pressure. They send just three and Felix gets the screen pass, but not going anywhere. So the Tigers defense once again, stopping the majors before they can do much of anything. So it'll be fourth down and another punt for Claypatch. Yeah, on the last punt in this direction, Chris Stewart let that one bounce. Have to imagine that the Suns playing a little bit of a role in that decision. Let's see if he'll have any more success fielding this one here. As the first couple of punts that we saw him return in the first quarter, he was able to break off a couple of nice returns. Stewart does catch this one, but he gets taken out of bounds right as he does catch that. But the Tigers will once again start in Millsap's territory. There's still nine minutes to go in this second quarter, so real danger for Millsaps as Trinity looks to put this one away. And it'll be first down on the 47. Yeah, Brian, and mentioning putting this one away, something that I'm sure the Tigers would love to do. We talked about in our meeting with Coach Urban, the fact that the Tigers early on in this year played games against McAllister and Texas Lutheran, games that they won by pretty large margins. But the past couple of weeks, we saw them go against some stiffer competition at Barry, back home against Center, some games that the Tigers really felt the effects of for the first time this season. The starters playing the majority of those games, full four, full four quarter football games. So it would be nice to give those guys some rest make sure that everyone moves into next week healthy as they continue this season along. Absolutely, there's a long way to go in this season of SAA play, and the Tigers will be right back on the field as a timeout has been taken on the field, so we'll take another break with them and be right back on Tiger Network.
Horn and the Tigers back, trying to complete this second and one. Handoff to Hutchison. This time, not going anywhere. The Major is doing a nice job. Stopping Hutchison ahead of the line of scrimmage, primarily Josh Smith there, the junior from Houston, Texas, at linebacker. Meeting Hutchison in the backfield and forcing a third and one. Third down and one. Handoff once again goes to Hutchison, and this time Hutchison is able to fight ahead with what looks to be just enough for the first down. We'll see where they mark him down. Referees coming together in the middle of the field right now. Going to go ahead and award the Tigers with a first down. Perhaps not. They'll con continue to confer right here and perhaps bring the chains out. Well, it looks like the Millsap sideline was not happy with that spot, so we might be getting just that, a measurement of the ball. So the referees will bring those chains out. You have to think the Tigers are going to go for this, even if it's called a fourth down. They've already gone for it several times today. but it looks like they will be just short. So it is in fact fourth down, a nice job by Coach Carter and the major sideline to ask for that measurement. But the Tigers offense showing no hesitation, coming fourth right down. back on the field. They'll go for it on this fourth and short. And another big play for the majors defensively right here. Obviously a daunting task to try and stop an aggressive physical Tiger offense from picking up a matter of inches right here but if you look at it from the flip side if they are able to get this stop what a huge swing of momentum to get the offense back on the field in relatively decent field position Hutchison takes this handoff and again is met near the line of scrimmage but this time does appear to have the first down with a good margin so no measurement needed Tiger Faithful excited with their cowbells for that first down. The Tigers looking to add to their 20 to nothing lead here halfway now through the second the quarter. Yeah, on that last play, a good run by Hutchinson. Something that we've noted has been typical of legend Grigsby early on in this year is putting his nose down, running straight through the line of scrimmage, aggressively north and south. Something that we haven't seen as much out of Hutchinson, a more balanced and experienced back, but on that occasion knew exactly the yardage that he needed to pick up, and he went and got it. Horn dropped back to pass on that one, but did not have any men open, so instead he took the football himself, which he did a couple of times last week against center, but not something that he wants to do often, as he is a prototypical pocket passer, which Urban loves. Second down and nine. Second down and nine for the Tigers. Hutchison gets the handoff. And as he nears 100 yards rushing on the day, gets about five there to bring up third and four. Hutchison with his 11th carry on the day leads all Tiger rushers, Grigsby with three, Royal with two. We'll see where the Tigers go on third and four. Horn this time drops back to pass and he has plenty of time. 
completes it right in front of him to Stewart, Stewart, who looks to be short of the marker. And it is a fourth down, but as we've seen several times today, no hesitation from the Tigers' sideline. They're going to go for this fourth and one. Already converting once on fourth down on this drive. We'll see if Hutchison gets the carry. He does, and he goes to his left and powers forward for the first down. So a methodical drive here for the Tigers, a couple of fourth down conversions, and the clock ticking here in the second quarter. Yeah, Brian, and methodical, such a good word to use to describe this Tiger offense. They've been incredibly patient all year long, very willing to take three, four, five yard gains. If each play knowing that that's going to result in a first down at the end of three plays, knowing that that's going to allow them to march down the field, chew up clock, dominate time of possession, and ultimately control football games. And Caleb Crawford with the reception in the middle of the field makes a couple of men miss and picks up the first down himself. So the Tigers inching closer to another touchdown as Horn completes this nice pass to Crawford. And I think as we talk about the way that the Tigers are going on this drive, the perfect example of what Coach Urban is looking for when he said he wants to control football games, not just win them. And that's reflected in the time of possession the Tigers have had this year. 37 minutes on average so far this year. Ranking second in Division Three. So the Tigers, good at holding the football, good at getting first downs and breaking down a defense to the point where they just have no energy left to stop them when it comes down to these goal-to-go situations. The Tigers knocking on the door once again, down to just over four minutes left in the quarter. We'll see if Horn goes to Merrifield down at the bottom of the screen. And he does. But a little miscommunication there. Mm -hmm. Merrifield not quite looking up when the pass third was down. there. So it'll be a third and five. Last time the Tigers were down here, we saw Austin Burtness with the nice touchdown reception. We'll see who Horn looks to here. We've got Stewart, Crawford, Self, and Merrifield as receivers, and you've got Carmouche in the backfield. Major showing some pressure. Horn gets rid of it quickly. Carmouche makes the first man miss, makes another one miss, and he's met right near the goal line. So a great job by Carmouche of nearly getting in but falling just short, and it does look like the Tigers will bring the field goal unit out. Yeah, and some incredibly impressive moves right here by Carmouche in the open field. Makes the first two men miss, but isn't able to regather re his balance right there. You have to imagine that if he was low, if he was level right there, that he would have probably powered through that third defender and found his way into the end zone. These three points, no guarantee. We saw Hensley miss a field goal from similar range earlier today. And this snap goes wild. Cheney unable to get a hold of it. And so once again, the field goal unit for the Tigers comes up empty. The Major is able to keep the Tigers off the scoreboard here to keep the deficit at 20 to nothing. see that snap going high and Cheney unable to get get it down for Hensley to kick and Hensley was left with no choice but to try to run but at that point the play was all but over so we have three minutes and 13 seconds left here in the first half the Majors with zero points on the scoreboard trying to get something going to end the half. They hand off this first play of the drive and it looked to be dead, but instead turns out to be a first down. A nice job there by the sophomore running back, Jadon Horton. 
looked to be caught in the backfield, but then burst out of nowhere to gain a first down, you see right here. Yeah, and a big play from Horton right there. Something that the, the majors have struggled with today is getting pinned back deep in their own territory. They've been very predictable with their play calling, trying to play it safe, trying to gather a couple of yards on the ground here and there. But the Tigers have recognized that pattern, have filled the box, have been very, very aggressive amongst that defensive line with the linebackers. So for him to stay on his feet and be able to gather even more yardage is incredibly important. And Johnson goes deep with that pass. And as you can see, three flags on the field. Pretty clear what we can expect here as Johnson tried to get it to his leading receiver, Moise Tezo. The pass was well short, but you'll see right here on the replay, Irving failing to turn around and get an eye on the ball. Yeah, and a big part of that is the fact that Thompson unable to step up into that throw, had multiple Tiger defenders right in his face, but ultimately played to the advantage of the Millsaps College Majors. If nothing else on this drive, the Majors want to make sure that the Tigers don't get another opportunity on offense. Of course, they want points themselves, but now as they're on their own 40, getting out of that key position in their own territory, trying to end the half on a positive note. Yeah, you're certainly right about that, Brian. But if they do manage to find their way into the end zone here with limited time on the clock, then you'd have to imagine that's a big momentum swing as this is the Millsaps team that's going to come out and receive the second half, second half kickoff as they opted to defer on the opening one here today. And this time Tesso comes up with a reception, but a flag came out just as the ball got to him. The referee says ineligible man downfield. So that first down will have to be replayed. Have to say in all my years of watching football, probably my least favorite penalty, the ineligible man downfield. I just don't understand how that can affect a play as much as it as it does, I don't see why it's a penalty, but affects the majors there. And those are the penalties that really hurt a team. Those are the penalties that you have to imagine factor into the record that the majors carry into this one today. One of the most penalized teams in the country. And when they seem to have something going a little bit on the 40 yard line, starting to march down the field in a position to put themselves, pull themselves back into this one really they start to move backwards again. Yeah, absolutely, what could have been a second and five with some positive plays after that pass interference. Instead, now second and 12, as Johnson got a couple of yards escaping pressure here, and he has to escape it again. And that pass is incomplete. Trey King, the nearest defender there. Johnson hasn't been all that impressive throwing on the run so far today. But something that we talked about in our broadcast last week against the center colonels, Brian, was the fact that center needed to find a way to take advantage of their quarterback's mobility, find a way to get him outside the pocket. You have to imagine that that's something that the majors are going to have to do here today if they want to have some success down the field. Try and break contain of this box and make the secondary defend for a longer period of time than they're used to. And Johnson again looking deep maybe trying to draw another pass interference penalty, but this one just falls incomplete, aiming to get to Tamias Mason. And with that incompletion, the clock stops at a minute 30, and the Tigers have all three timeouts. So as Claypatch gets ready to send this punt away, we'll see if the Tigers look to get some more points before going into the locker room. Yeah, Brian, with plenty of time, especially considering the fact that they have three times Three timeouts, as you mentioned, they should be in relatively decent field position, but this should be a great opportunity for them to work on a two-minute drill. That game last week that we saw, they got the ball back late in the first half, but weren't able to move it at all. And I don't know if you could see that one at home, but the wind has really picked up here in San Antonio, and that punt just died in front of Stewart, leading to him letting it bounce in front of him, and now some extracurricular activity near the sideline. Coach Urban 
making his way over there, making sure nothing happens that he does not want his team to be involved in. And so a minute 21 left in the first half. Tiger is up 20 to zero over Millsaps. Three timeouts and plenty of time for Horn and the Tigers to add to their lead. Hutchison in the backfield and four Tiger receivers out wide. Horn does drop back to pass and he's looking towards Hutchison. Thought Merrifield there on the outside could have been an option, but instead gets the check down with Hutchison to just get a nice gain on first down. Yeah, Brian, what I'd expect to see on this drive right here is the Tigers being more stereotypical. What we saw in that drive before the half against center last week was them take multiple deep shots in a row, got a little bit outside of themselves, but they have plenty of time to continue to do what they do very best right here on this drive. And speaking of doing what they're very best at, Hutchison breaking through for the first down and well over the 100-yard mark as a couple of flags fly after the run. I have to imagine this is for some personal foul activity as we saw on the punt. Some skirmishes there near the sideline, so it's now bleeding onto the field. We'll see who it will hurt. And it looks like it was Chris Stewart in the middle of that one who was also involved in that skirmish in the midst of that punt right near the sideline, as you just mentioned. So it'll be interesting to see who this flag goes against, perhaps some unsportsmanlike penalties that are about to go both ways right here as the referees try and gain control of this one. We're definitely starting to see some of this rivalry make its way onto the field in the form of the unsportsmanlike conduct mentioned these two teams have faced each other 41 times dating back to number 1974 so we've got some offsetting unsportsmanlike conduct penalties that's number 14 for Millsaps Jacoby Howard and as you mentioned number one Chris Stewart for the Tigers so it'll just be first down at midfield. These two teams familiar with one another and competitive against one another. Millsaps with the all-time edge, 22 to 19. But these two teams have split their last six matchups with each row team winning since 2017. So some very competitive football always played between these two schools. Horn looking to throw on this second and 10 and he faces pressure quickly and is brought down with the sack, that's Zach Clark, the defensive lineman there, getting to Horn quickly for the first sack of the afternoon. Yeah, Brian, and two-minute drill 101 is don't take sacks, right? One of the biggest factors is you don't want to move backwards. You don't want the clock to continue to run. Position right there where Horn needs to find a way to throw that, throw that one away or check it down to one of his running backs, wide receiver short. Yeah, and you saw Clark doing a nice job getting around Bear there on the offensive line. And now just a short run on third and 22. Tigers deciding to take it into the locker room. And that's just what they'll do. So Millsaps able to contain the Tigers there on the last drive of the half. Tigers content with going into the locker room up 22 nothing, Looking to remain undefeated here. 4-0 so far on the year, looking to go 3-0 and in SAA play, and they are off on the right start. We'll be back after this 20-minute halftime on Tiger Network as you get some look at the first half stats. Excited to bring you what should be a great second half of action. From Millsaps, on the east side, to your far right, there is a number of possession stand open, as well as portable restroom. We will ask you to please not go on.
Hello again, Tiger fans. Welcome back to Tiger Network, where we are excited to bring you the second half of this matchup between two SAA rivals, the Trinity Tigers up 20 to nothing over the Millsaps College Majors. Luke, what stood out to you in that first half as the Tigers put 20 up on Millsaps? Well, I think the biggest thing to say is the points that they didn't put up on the board. They missed a couple of field goals, and in the first place, they had some drives that resulted in field goal attempts. This is a team that wants to put the ball in the, in the end zone on every single drive. That's part of finishing. That's part of playing complete games and controlling games. That's something that you mentioned, Coach, Ur Coach Urban, working on in our meetings this week and in previous weeks. So expect the Tigers to go out and capitalize and finish drives resulting in touchdowns rather than field goal attempts. Absolutely. Yeah, it feels a little bit weird this game the Tigers clearly dominating the box score and the scoreboard as well up 20 to nothing but it definitely feels like there is more there that the Tigers can tap into and I think that just speaks to the high expectations that they've garnered going 4-0 and to start the year earning their ranking in the top 25 at number 23 going into today and so we'll see what the Tigers are able to do here coming out of the locker room Meanwhile, for Millsaps, you have to feel like you're sort of still in this game. Obviously, 20 points is a lot to come back from, but could be a lot worse. And so, should be an exciting second half of football. Yeah, and I certainly agree with you that the majors are right there in this game, right? One touchdown, and all of a sudden, they're within two scores. But the question is, what do they do? Where do they go on offense? Early in the game, we talked a little bit about running outside the tackles about the short passing game, but they've moved away from that in part because this Tiger defense has taken those things away. So what's there for the majors? And that'll be what we need to figure out early on in the second half, or what they need to figure out more specifically. The second half kickoff is away. And it'll be brought out of the end zone, a late decision there, and likely not a good one, as you had Chris Chandler there here to want to kneel it down for the touchback but then brought it out and instead is met at about the nine yard line so some tough field position to start this second half not what you're looking for if you're Millsaps. Yeah certainly not what we talked about at the end of the half was this majors team being predictable in their play calling when pinned back this deep but it's time to figure something out it's time to take a risk down 20 to nothing already worst thing that happens is you lose this game right Ryan but you need to take some opportunities take some shots to put yourself back in it and say at least you tried at the end of the day and it looks like a quick timeout here and also so a timeout called by Millsaps so unusual coming out of the half to see a timeout called and it also looks like we have a new quarterback in, or at least at the moment it did. Now, it does appear to, that we have a new quarterback. Number 18, Brody Davis. So a quarterback change at the half for Millsaps, and that's the second change that they've made going into this game as Davis hands off that first run of the half. We expected the starter going into today's game to be Caleb Thompson, who had started off the year red hot for the majors, becoming the first majors quarterback in several years to complete to have two straight games with 300 yards throwing. Was named the SAA Offensive Player of the Week for their victory over Rhodes, but instead we had Melvendrick Johnson as the starter. He went four for 10 through for just 18 yards. And so now we've got the new quarterback, Brody Davis, in for the majors. And he drops back and tries to pass the ball. But before he can get rid of it, that is number 93. Harris Good with the Harris sack. On the sack. You see Good breaking through that line. The majors just unable to contain him. The second time he's gotten in the backfield for a sack this afternoon and so a third and long deep inside their own territory a tough spot for Davis to be in his first drive of the game Tigers send four 
and Davis looks to the sideline, and he's able to nearly complete that pass, but instead an incomplete pass ruled the referees as it looked like there was an opportunity there near the sideline for Mason, but unable to get his feet in bounds, and so a quick three and out for the majors. The Tigers will be getting the ball back to start the second half. Yeah, Brian and Mason pinned to the sideline really well by the Tigers secondary right there, but it looked like the young quarterback was able to drop that one into the bucket. Obviously, would have been a very difficult reception to make, but one that the majors really have to have if they're going to have any success. Clay Patch's punt is blocked by Caleb Harmel, bursting into the view of the punter, and that'll be a safety for the Tigers' defense. <laughs> The second straight week we've seen this special teams unit come up huge. And this time it's Caleb Marmel with the blocked punt that goes out of the back of the end zone and results in two points for the Tigers. Harmel's speed, something that Coach Urban has talked about repeatedly. And last week we saw Harmel's speed actually on the other side of a punt hit a fake punt by Eli Gaiman of the Tigers and Harmel with the reception. And now this time Harmel coming through defensively with that blocked punt. So just nothing doing for the majors and a terrible way for them to start the half, you have to say. Yeah, absolutely, Brian. I think you're right about that. Interesting call right there from Coach Urban. I'm sure that that was punt block that they had on. He talked a lot about how his approach to special teams is a much more aggressive one than a lot of other programs in the country. Really an area of the game that this Tiger team has capitalized on, and it's part of playing a very complete football game. They've put themselves in great positions, obviously scoring points off of special teams right there, but they've it's played a huge part in where they've set up on the field in so many games. Chris Stewart has been such a huge factor returning punts and returning kicks as he'll has, have the opportunity to do right here. Yeah, Clay Patch with the short punt off of the safety here and Stewart able to get it past midfield. A nice return. The Tigers, like they've done so many times today, will start in Millsap's territory. And Tucker Horn and the Tigers with a great start to the second half. Horn 14 for 23 on his passing attempts for 170 yards. He's got two throwing touchdowns. Down on the 47. That's a completion percentage of 61%, which is actually below his season average of 73%, which ranks fifth nationally in Division Three. Still, even with what you could call a down first half in some ways, Tiger is still up. Now 22 to zero and Horn Completes the first pass of the half to Hutchison, who gets a nice gain on first down. About six yards there. Hutchison, with that reception, gets to 54 yards in the air. That's in addition to the 105 yards he has rushing, and he gets the handoff here and takes it for about two yards. But Hutchison doing a phenomenal job today, really carrying this Tigers offense in many ways. Yeah, you're certainly right about that, Brian. But looking at the other side of the ball, this has been a majors defense that's been really good on second and third downs. They've just struggled on first down. The first down replay that we saw a moment ago of Hutchinson swinging out to the left, it looks like a number of majors defenders dropped back and were trying to keep the play in front of them but when that's the case they're allowing this tigers offense to pick up five six seven yards on first that's down and put themselves in a position where they have three downs more often than not to pick up just a couple of yards yeah we have seen the tigers go for it on fourth down several times today but on that one they will not have to as they complete the first down on third down merrifield that with that five. reception keeps the chains moving for the tigers Hutchison gets the ball 
and just there's been a couple of times where he's met in the backfield but definitely few and far between just seems every time Hutchison gets the ball he's getting positive yardage and like you said putting this Tigers offense in a good position for second and third down it is second down yeah I think that's indicative of what coach Urban has talked about the fact that he is a true three down back and he brings a number of different skills to the position he is incredibly patient, one of the most patient as we see it. Reverse right here, and Tucker Horn getting out there, trying to lay a block, but it won't matter because Stewart races into the end zone anyway. The trick play there for the Tigers. Hutchison going on the outside, pitching it to Stewart, who runs it all the way into the end zone. But we see a couple of flags on that play. And you see the hold right there on number 19 of the Tigers, likely what's going to get called. That's wide receiver Caleb Crawford. A tough call there for the Tigers who look to have a touchdown on that nice trick play. Coach Urban diving into his playbook, trying to put this game away. Tigers will have to do it once again, second and 10 from the 35. Hutchison in the backfield alongside Horn. Horn has plenty of time and he looks deep and some contact there, but no flag coming time. out from the referee. Horn trying to get to Baylor Jordan over there. And interesting group on the field right there. Baylor Jordan is who that pass was intended for, but you see both Jordan and another tight end, number 48, Anton Noble, walk off the field right there. So an interesting personnel group that we haven't seen the Tigers make use of a whole lot this year. But it'll be interesting to keep note of that and see if that's something that the Tigers utilize more as they move forward this season. Those are two names that are typically on the field in a short yardage situation. At that time, trying to go deep to Jordan. Didn't work out, forcing the third and 10, which Horn is able to complete to Caleb Crawford, That's just shy team. of the first down marker. But Tigers, once again, staying on the field. Fourth down and we'll look to convert one. this fourth down. Yeah, and a great pass by Horn right there. A little bit low, but considering the fact that he is throwing from the opposite hash mark on an outbreaking route, Really impressive, strong throw from Horn right there and puts them right near the sticks yet again. And Hutchison takes that carry and has no issue getting the first down. And you can see why the Tigers face no hesitation when deciding to go for it on fourth down when you have a big back by Hutchison there who can easily get you that yardage. Yeah, you're absolutely right about that. And again, we see Hutchison understanding the sticks, understanding the down and distance, putting his head down and running straight through the backs of his offensive line in order to pick up enough for the first down. Hutchison takes the carry and this time has a hole to work with, nearly breaking free with another long run. Instead, just takes it for about five. But again, a positive gain on That's first down, Hutchison. putting the Tigers in a great position second on second five. and five. Defensive backs playing off of the Tiger receivers here. And the play goes to Hutchison, who makes a man miss and takes it all the way down to the five yard line. The cowbells ringing here at Trinity Stadium. Another first down for Trinity. And they've taken a good five minutes off of the clock here already. So, Warren Lee's earlier methodical once again coming into play here. And it looked like number 55, Drake A. Bear playing that right tackle, perhaps right guard position as we see them line up right now, who is responsible for kicking out the end and provided a great hole for Hutchison to run through right there. Horn looks to his right and he completes that pass for the moment, then a late bobble and it hits the ground, says the referee, nearly a sensational catch by Chris Stewart, who went down to get this one but you could see the ball moving around as he tried to complete the pass, but the referee all over that one. 
And in addition to that, a holding penalty on the Tigers. So they'll be moving back just a bit after that near touchdown completion. And these are the type of penalties that we talked about early in the game, hurting the Millsaps majors throughout their season thus far. And it's something that's played a factor so far today for the Tigers. Earlier in the first half, they had the ball all the way down to the first, to the one yard line. We saw them break into the end zone, but play get called back because of a holding penalty, much like this last one. They were able to get back within the five, but ultimately had to settle for a field goal attempt, which they missed. And again, in similar position here. So hoping for a better end result right now as we talked about at the opening of this half, trying to find ways to finish drives and have them result in touchdowns rather than field goal attempts. And here on second and five from the five yard line, we have Stewart and Merrifield lined up to Horn's left. Horn, we've seen so far this year, loves to go to his right. That's where Burton has scored his touchdown earlier. But we'll see what Horn decides to do here. Does look left and does see Merrifield open in the end zone for a Tigers touchdown. Merrifield breaking free in this short yardage situation and coming up with that clean catch for the Tigers touchdown. Yeah, in the first half, Brian, we saw a ball sail when Merrifield was the intended target. Didn't get his eyes around quick enough, but a big part of that was the fact that the defensive back got hands on, was able to slow the route down and disrupt the timing. But on that occasion right there, defensive back gave Merrifield too much cushion too close to the goal line he got a clean release and ultimately the timing worked out perfectly and Horn found him in stride PJ Hensley's extra point is good so the Tigers take a 29 to nothing lead with 8 minutes remaining here in the third quarter a great way for the Tigers to come out of the locker room and make a statement that they are ready to take control of this game as we take a look around the SAA with the Tigers seemingly in control now here, they hope to extend their record to 5-0. and The other team in the SAA already with a 5-0 and record is Birmingham Southern, and they are in Danville, Kentucky for a big matchup against Center College. They are currently up 28-21 to with seven minutes remaining in the fourth quarter. So a big matchup that the Tigers no doubt will keep their eye on after this one. Birmingham Southern, the only other undefeated team in the SAA. And these two teams will face off each other in Birmingham later in the season, first week of November. But first things first, Tigers trying to take care of business here against Millsaps. Then they're on the road next week at Swanee before coming back on October 30th for a home game against Hendricks ahead of that big matchup against Birmingham Southern on the road. Blake Lynn sends this one deep into the end zone. This time a fair catch is called. And a good decision this time. Honestly, you can point a lot of what's happened in this second half to that decision to bring the ball out of the end zone by Chandler on the second half kickoff. Him putting his team at the at their own 10 or 9 yard line then gave the Tigers great field position and allowed them to score a touchdown. Yeah, I think that their field position, the major's field position at the end of that drive and the fact that they needed to punt so deep in their own territory played a big role in Coach Urban's decision to go ahead and call out the punt block unit. Caleb Harmel obvious, obviously able to get home, put two, board, two points on the board for the Tigers, but then kicking off from deep in their own territory, set the Tigers up again. That's been this, one of the biggest stories of the game so far, Brian, has been the Tigers' really, really fav favorable field position in the Millsaps field position that's really limited what they've been able to do offensively. I think limiting offensively is a great way to put what the Tigers have done to this Millsaps squad. Just 48 yards total offense, and that's going to go down a little bit 
as Felix loses yardage on that first down run. A penalty marker is out on the field well after the play was completed, so we'll see what this is all about. he has been disqualified from the game. Yeah, it sounds like that was his second penalty of the nature on the day. Although I'm not entirely sure what happened. Miller obviously visibly upset on the sideline right now about that call that went against him. But I don't quite recall the first one against him on the day. Yeah, I don't either. I believe that first unsportsmanlike conduct penalty against the Tigers was against Stewart. Chris Stewart, the wide receiver and punt returner, but must have missed something on one of these unsportsmanlike conduct penalties. So if the referees are correct, Campbell Miller, the super senior defensive lineman, will no longer be in this game. A tough break for the Tigers. Now Millsaps trying to take advantage of that penalty and of Miller's absence. They have a second and six. Davis back to pass, and he looks to go deep and that pass is broken up by Ezra Gore doing a nice job deep on that pass. And Davis, who took over from, for Melvendrick Johnson, this is just his second career appearance. He's a freshman out of San Augustine, Florida. Just threw two passes in the Millsaps Majors loss to Barry. And now he's letting it fly here in San Antonio as he takes over for the Majors. Yeah, not a, not a bad ball at all, but airtight coverage on that last play by Ezra Gore. Obviously, we saw him fail to get his eyes flipped back around, but stayed attached to the hip of the receiver and didn't come through him when that ball arrived, which is a big reason he didn't draw a flag. Davis trying to go deep again, and you see him land on his back as he was hit hard while releasing that ball, and that falls incomplete, intended for Moise Tezo. But the Tigers defense standing up for Campbell Miller, holding the majors and forcing yet another fourth down punt. This time, Claypatch able to get the punt away. But you see the wind playing a part in where that ball bounces. Stewart letting it fall at the 28. And that's where the Tigers will take over. Good start to the second half. And we'll be right back on the Tiger Network. First down to the 29. Tiger offense back on the field quickly after that stop. Tucker Horn still at the helm. Jaython Royal in the backfield with him. And Royal gets this first carry of the drive and he breaks several tackles and gains about 16 yards on first down. A powerful run from Royal just barreling through the Millsaps defense. Yeah, Brian, and the first thing that you notice about Royal when he steps foot onto the field is his stature. He's five foot five, but he does weigh in at 188 pounds. So the best word to describe him as a running back is stout above anything else. But he's a little bit more than the typical running back or the profile would indicate, I suppose. He's a physical runner. He breaks tackles really well, but he's still very quick on his feet. He can make people miss. Speaking of making people miss, 
Burtness with the great reception there near the sideline in between two Millsaps defenders. But no matter for Burtness as he's able to come up with that catch and another Tigers first down. Yeah, and a really impressive grab right there from Burtness. Ran right under that one, more able to drop it in, but Burtness secures that one with his fingertips, it looks like. And the Tigers back up to the line in a hurry, ready to get this one going again. And Burtness in the slot again, and you can just see his tall stature jumps out at you. We'll see if Horn goes that way again. He's looking left instead, and he's got Caleb Crawford but unable to complete that pass, that ball sails out of bounds. Yeah, and now with the wind at his back, Tucker Horn going to need to make a little bit of an adjustment, trying to read how that wind is affecting his throws. That one looked to get picked up just a little bit and carried out to the left side of the end zone. Yeah, that wind, a result of the cold front that has brought these beautiful temperatures to San Antonio, a high of 74 which, yes, that is a cold front here in San Antonio. Royal gets the carry on second down. He gets a good pickup of about five. And you were talking about Royal's body type, and it's something Urban described as having a real low center of gravity and great balance. And the comparison he thought of was Maurice Jones-Drew, the longtime running back for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Royal, just someone not afraid to put his shoulders down and run into guys. And we've seen it already here today, and we saw it several times in the fourth quarter against center last week where he had six consecutive carries just running into the Colonel defense at that time. This time, a bit of miscommunication. Horn putting both hands on his helmet, explaining what he wanted from that route. That'll force a fourth and four for the Tigers. And Horn looking to the sideline to see what the decision is here. Hensley has already missed two field goals for the Tigers. And with the wind we just mentioned, this long 36-37 yard field goal, likely not something Coach Urban wants to mess with. And so the Tigers offense there trying to go for it on fourth and four. Play clock down to six, but Horn does snap it. And he completes it to Caleb Crawford, who's able to break a tackle and get the first down. So Crawford likely would not have gotten that first down had he not broken that tackle from Jet Coolman. The freshman there unable to wrap Crawford up. And so a big conversion for the Tigers keeps their offense on the field. And in addition to that completion, the Millsaps defense was offsides regardless. So would have been a conversion either way, but still a nice play from Crawford. Keeps the Tigers moving and on the doorstep of another touchdown. There still appears to be some confusion. So another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty in this game. This one goes against Millsaps, but I'm sure it's something that Coach Urban and Coach Carter for Millsaps not thrilled about. Not something you want to see from either side. Horn hands this one off to Hutchison, who again flips it to Stewart, and Stewart waltzes into the end zone, hit as he makes it in, but he's in for the touchdown. We saw that play a little bit earlier, work to perfection, but a penalty brought it back. This time, the Tigers run it from a shorter distance, and it works just as well for the Tigers' touchdown. And anytime you have the opportunity to get Chris Stewart the ball in his hands with green grass in front of him you want to do so a member of the trinity track and field team he has great speed in the open field and coach urban has taken advantage of that in any way that he has had the opportunity to this year he's a guy that we've seen on punt returns kick returns on handoffs and of course at the wide receiver position 
that extra point from Hensley is good. And Stewart just making all sorts of records. Today, we mentioned earlier, he became the ninth player in Tiger history to reach 2,000 yards in punt returns. And now with that touchdown reception, ties Austin Burtonis for a spot in the top 10 for all-time touchdown receptions in Trinity history. Touchdown reception number 17 in his career. So Burtonis and Stewart in back-to-back -back weeks, reaching the top 10 in Tiger history. And actually, as I realized that while it was a lot going on and a real flashy play to get the touchdown to Stewart, that, in fact, goes down as a rushing touchdown for Stewart. So not quite yet breaking into the top 10 for touchdown receptions, but nonetheless coming up with a big score, putting the Tigers up 36 to nothing. With the Tigers up 36 to nothing, we'll take another quick look at the score in Danville, Kentucky, where the Birmingham Southern Panthers are taking a knee and clinching victory over center. So Birmingham Southern, who was down 21 to 14 in the third quarter, comes back to win on the road and remain unbeaten on the season and in SAA play. So for the moment, these two undefeated SAA teams remain on a path and a collision course to face each other in Birmingham on November 6th. We'll see what happens in between then, but both teams taking care of business so far on this Saturday afternoon. And off to Byron Phillips. Carson Bird on the tackle. That is second down, and eight. Davis looking to complete another pass, but all over him was Trey King and a little too much over him as that play draws a penalty flag. We've seen the majors try to do that a couple of times and have been successful in drawing a couple of pass interference penalties as their quarterbacks just throw it and hope something good happens. And on this one, similar to what we saw called against the majors in the first half, play where the ball's thrown down the sideline defensive back doesn't get his eyes around while continuing to go through the body of the receiver. Trey King guilty of that on that play right there and Majors will have first down to operate with here at their own 38 yard line. First down the 38. Davis has to escape some real pressure and gets it away going deep to Ojanta, but that falls incomplete. Jeremy Irving there on the coverage as well as Casey Hampton. So he's second and 10 coming up for the majors. Again, what the Tigers did really well on that play was staying, staying within themselves in the secondary, staying very disciplined back there. They saw the quarterback, saw him scramble, but they stayed deeper than the deepest offensive threat, offensive re offensive receiver, something that we didn't see at all times last week. And that completion to Moise Tezo, but Casey Hampton there to wrap him up right away and drag him down, forcing a third and four. Millsaps still at just 54 yards total offense. Have barely had any plays in Trinity's side of the field. We'll see if they can complete a third down here. Trinity crowd making some noise. 
as we've mentioned several times this year, just fantastic to have fans back in the stands after an empty 2021 spring season. They're making noise as Davis tries to escape pressure and tries to get it to his running back, but an incomplete pass as Phillips was unable to corral that one. He had some green grass in front of him, but instead, the punter clay patch once again out on the field. Fourth and four. Yeah, just a little bit too much velocity from just a couple yards away in the backfield for the young quarterback. Wants to certainly try and put a little bit less on that ball, make sure that his running back has the time to react to it. And on that one, Harmel nearly coming up with another blocked punt, but instead Stewart receives it and is brought down at the 28 yard line. So the Tiger defense keeping that zero up on the scoreboard. And we'll see if it's still Tucker Horn and it is not Tucker Horn as we expected as this game progresses and as the Tigers maintain their big lead, we have a change at quarterback. We have number six, Will Cheney. The senior from right here in San Antonio now taking over the offense for the Tigers. First play for Cheney is a handoff to Carmouche and he fumbles it. And the Millsaps majors are on top of it. A tough break there as Carmouche wrapped up and really looked like that play could have been called dead. But he was just fit sitting up, standing up right there in between a couple of tacklers and then the big hit forced that ball loose and all of a sudden the majors for the first time in the red zone yeah brian certainly agree with you in regards to the possibility of that play being called dead looked like two majors had carmouche held up right there trinity running back was standing up right when he got hit from behind which jarred that ball loose but it's number 65, Jack Danclef, on the offensive line, who's just into the game, who made a shoestring, shoestring tackle, which certainly saved the touchdown right there. And a difficult snap there, and Michael drew it all over Davis. All sorts of things going on on that play. It looked like the majors could have been called for a false start, and the Tigers wanted it. Instead, that snap oh, on the ground, time. Davis oh, unable to collect it, and then hit hard by Jewett on that sack. I'll see on that replay. Second down. On that right side of the offensive line, maybe a little bit of early movement as you alluded to, but Tigers certainly will be happy with that end result, forcing them back 10 yards instead of just the five they would have gotten with the false start. And that pass is intercepted. Ezra Gore says, we are not letting that shutout go away that easily. He comes up with the interception and the Millsaps major so close to scoring for the first time today are denied. You see on the replay right here, quarterback's eyes downfield the entire time, fixed on the same wide receiver, something that we saw Thompson struggle with a little bit in the first half. The younger quarterback coming in, dealing with the same issue. Ezra Gore, veteran in the defensive secondary for the Tigers, able to make a good read and jump on that ball. After that fumble on the previous drive by Carmouche, a different running back in the backfield for the Tigers, Gerald Daniels with his first carry of the afternoon. Daniels, the senior from Houston. The flag down on the far side of the field. Tigers decline the 12 men on the field penalty. And we've got all sorts of new faces on the field for both teams. Mentioned Will Cheney in at quarterback. Taking over for Tucker Horn, who went 20 for 32 today, 221 yards and three touchdowns. Another excellent afternoon for Horn. That ball loose once again, but referee coming in to signal that Daniels was down. And an appropriate time to mention 
The Tigers, unfortunately, with their first fumble of the year, had been one of 11 teams in Division Three to not lose a fumble. And an unfortunate way to lose it, too, as Luke and I both believe could have been blown dead. But it's all about the victories, not necessarily those funky stats that we like to look for. So no harm done as Ezra Gore had come up with that interception to make up for that lost fumble. This Tiger defense, a unit full of pride. Even in their 20-point victory last week, Coach Urban mentioning that all across the sideline, they were disappointed to give up a good 100 yards to center in their last two drives in the fourth quarter and just some garbage time. But that is something that they do not want to do. They want to make their opponents earn every single yard and every single point. That's evident with their shutout of McAllister to open the year. Evident by them not allowing a single touchdown to Barry and only allowing three touchdowns in now their fifth game with two coming against Texas Lutheran and one coming last week against center. But this Tiger defense continues to make a statement and the Tigers offense also rolling here in San Antonio. They will take a 36 to nothing lead into the fourth quarter. Tigers on the cusp of remaining unbeaten on the year. The Trinity Stand Band making some noise and having the Tiger faithful sing along with them as we head into this fourth quarter. Plenty to be happy about if you're the Tigers as Cheney drops that pass off. And the first down for the Tigers. Some more flags on the field. Likely some more unsportsmanlike conduct penalties coming out. Carmouche making the catch and getting the first down. And it looks like Chase Hurd at the end of this play had a little bit of extracurricular activity with a blocker in the secondary for the Tigers, threw him down out of bounds, will certainly be penalized and likely receive an, another unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. After the play, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number seven, defense, 15 yard penalty at the end of the play, first down. But immediately after that penalty, we saw Coach Urban call another timeout. I'm sure going to have a conversation with his team, let them know that this one is well in hand to go ahead and finish this one out, to continue to control this football game, but not let anything get away from them in terms of interactions with this Millsaps Majors group. I think that's a great call by you as you see Urban here, the entire team huddling together, clearly delivering an important message up 36 to nothing in the fourth quarter. There is far too much at stake this season to let some silly unsportsmanlike conduct penalties cost them later. You never know if they start to add up and they could cost them appearances in future games. So don't want anything like that to happen late in this one. The Tigers trying to get to 5-0 and on the year, 3-0 and in SAA play. They will head to Swanee next week for a road conference matchup before being right back at home against Hendricks ahead of what should be a big matchup November 6th on the road at Birmingham Southern. So lots in front of the Tigers who are ranked 23rd in the country. Don't want anything to put that at risk here when they're up by so many That's points. The ball carrier.
second down. Cheney faces some pressure, is able to escape it, and gets rid of that ball and com nearly completes it. Had a man open there, Carter Self. Nice job by Will Cheney to escape pressure, but unable to complete that pass. And a good job by Cheney, as you mentioned, doing a little bit of magic work in the backfield, able to elude the pressure, and a ball that he throws on the run, throws a little bit low, but Carter Self goes down through that one. Hits him in the chest and have to believe that that's one that he should haul in more often than not. And Cheney, like myself, a proud graduate of Alamo Heights High School here in San Antonio. The Mules 7-0 after a big victory yesterday at Medina Valley. Like the Tigers, undefeated on the year. So good to see Cheney, the quarterback that I saw a lot during my time as a Mule, get some playing time here. Quarterback room that Coach Urban is very proud of between Tucker Horn, Will Cheney, and Ryan Back. Three quarterbacks he believes possess similar qualities as pocket passers, and so he feels confident with all three of them if need be. Cheney staying on the field here for the fourth down attempt. Tigers have completed several of these, and Cheney on the run. Some contact there in the end zone but doesn't matter as that's a touchdown. Ethan Boyer with the great catch in the end zone and Will Cheney putting it right where it needs to be. Yeah, we mentioned on that last play where Will Cheney threw on the run, he threw the ball a little bit low, but this one in a place where only his receiver can go up and get it over the top. Great hand-eye coordination, coordination from Boyer right there, hauling that one in and falling down inbounds for the Tiger touchdown. Two majors defenders right there, but Boyer going up and getting it. So a beautiful touchdown there from Cheney to Boyer. A flag down on that extra point attempt. Tigers will decline that penalty as that extra point will count. So they'll take a 43 to nothing lead and we'll take a quick break. Be right back on Tiger Network. Lynn this time doesn't send the kickoff into the end zone. It is returned to the 25 by Chris Chandler. But the Tigers remain remaining with plenty of energy, even with 13 minutes left in the fourth quarter. And them up 43 to nothing, still plenty to play for. And I think a large part of that, Brian, has to do with the pride that you mentioned earlier. Obviously, you talked about the disappointment with allowing some, some bigger chunk plays for center or to center in last weekend's matchup. But the pride really showed on the last drive of the game in the goal line stand that the Tigers made as time expired on the clock. Even with the game entirely in hand with no opportunity for the Colonels to come back at that point. They weren't going to allow the opposition into the end zone. And we mentioned that there is a lot of new names out on the field for both teams, but one name that remains out on the field is the starter at yeah, offensive yeah. guard for the majors, Walter Johnson. And definitely want to highlight a couple of big awards that Johnson has received um, in the past couple of weeks. Most importantly for the Millsaps program, he's the recipient of the Juan Joseph Memorial Award. 
that award is given in memory of Juan Joseph, who was a standout quarterback, coach, and mentor for the Millsaps program, and it gives recognition to the most outstanding student athlete that exemplifies altruistic spirit on and off the field that okay. Joseph exhibited in his life. And so that was awarded this year to Walt Johnson. Normally, the winner of this award is given the honor of wearing the number 11 jersey. But since Johnson is an offensive lineman, he instead is wearing a number 11 helmet patch and jersey patch to go along with his number 57 as an offensive lineman. So a great honor for Joseph. Additionally, Johnson has been named a semi-finalist for the William V. Campbell Trophy. We had a player on center, Patrick Edwards, last week also nominated as a semi-finalist for this award. That's given out by the National Football Foundation and the College Hall of Fame. Johnson just one of 39 selections in Division Three to be recognized for this, which recognizes the best football scholar athlete in the nation for combined academic success and performance on the field. Some past winners of this award include Justin Herbert, Peyton Manning, and Tim Tebow. So really a great honor for Johnson, both from the Millsaps program and nationally for his work on and off the field. A big tackle there on the punt return. Anthony Mayfield making the tackle and for the first time returning the punt was Timmy Page for Trinity, the first year out of Flowery Branch, Georgia. After the touchdown pass on the last drive from Will Cheney, we've got yet another new quarterback. This time it is Ryan Back. He's the first year from Austin, Texas and the third of the quarterbacks for the Tigers. Another pocket passer that Urban is excited to see grow, and we've seen him a couple of times, especially in that game against McAllister, which the Tigers were able to win 64 to nothing. And he gets some more playing time here Good today. Brian back. Yeah, Brian, you mentioned that Coach Urban does refer to all three of these quarterbacks as pocket passers, but what we've seen out of back this year, you'd have to, I'm sure you would agree with me that he has shown his ability as the most mobile of the group especially in the scrimmage that we got to got the opportunity to watch before the season started here against Texas Lutheran University. Back was all over the field and it was frankly quite impressive in his first showing against some competition outside of the Maroon and White. Absolutely was very impressive in the action we've gotten to see from him. And I'm sure the coaching staff is happy to have him have live reps whenever possible. First down on the 46. And this big lead has allowed them to do so. Another big run there on the outside. Tate Jernigan in for the first time making his name heard and the cowbell still ringing deep into the fourth quarter. An impressive run by Jernigan right there. Looked like the majors had contain on him, but he bubbled that one just a little bit on the outside, was able to get the edge with some great speed and then was off to the races down the sideline for a big pickup for the Tigers. And Luke, as the Tigers continue to drive here and with a big 43 to nothing lead, you have to think and I know we both feel it's a special time to be a Tiger this fall. That pass falls incomplete, the flag down on the field, but the men's soccer team ranked second in the country, women's soccer team ranked 21st, volleyball ranked third, and now football ranked 23rd and likely going to increase that ranking after today's performance. What do you think is going on here in San Antonio on Trinity's campus with all this success? Well, Brian, some really, really special things, right? We see that this is a group that year in and year out dominates within the region, within the state of Texas, but they're all groups that this season, as things return to normalcy, have had the opportunities to travel a little bit. We've seen the volleyball team have great success in the state of California and against other nat nationally recognized teams. It's the same thing for the soccer program, who's hosted some teams from out of state. 
both on the men's and women's side. So it's incredibly impressive to see them have the continued success against teams from the state and from those that are coming from different regions. I think it will be an absolutely special month of November if everything continues to go according to plan and some of these postseason tournaments come to a head with the possibility of Trinity hosting some of them with their high rankings in the sports. So definitely we'll hope to see some good postseason performances as these teams rack up the victories in the regular season. Want to mention also some of the winter sports getting their start today, swimming and diving with their first meet right here at Trinity's campus and cross country also in Ohio this evening. Looks like they already wrapped up their meet in Oberlin, Ohio, and had an eighth place finish while the women finished 14th. So some all around good finishes across Trinity Sports. Definitely a lot to look forward to. Mentioned earlier today, if you were tuning in, that Birmingham Southern won their matchup on the road at center. So they remain unbeaten in football as the Tigers look to do here. So both teams will be undefeated in the SAA and some great football being played in this conference. Back and the Tigers continue to drive down the field. Looking to put some more points on the board. Already 43 to nothing. As complete to Tyson Cornett. Second down. Ryan, one thing that I think has been interesting as we've seen a couple of new quarterbacks in the game is how the playbook has changed a little bit for the Tigers. We saw Cheney move outside the pocket, obviously throw that touchdown. And that last play, we saw a screen pass, a play or a type of play that we haven't seen from this Tiger offense a whole lot on the season. And that time back had to escape some pressure and unable to complete the pass, but did escape the sack. So nice job getting away from pressure. And I think you're right, Luke. It's interesting to see not only new players on the field, but the coaching staff experiment with the different types of players that they have. You never know what can happen down the line. And so every single member of this roster has to be ready to go. Tigers face a third and four here. Millsap sends a lot of pressure, but the Tigers line blocks it well. Back now just gets rid of it and throws it out of bounds. So a fourth down coming up for the Tigers. And the kicking unit looks to be coming on the field. And interesting to note, as the field goal unit does come on the field, that P.J. Hensley not going to attempt the kick. It'll be Blake Lynn who does the kickoffs for the Tigers. So after Hensley missed two field goals earlier in the game, perhaps just giving Lynn a chance here late. Lynn gets this one away and it is up and through. So the Tigers get a field goal to add to their lead now 46 to nothing. We'll take a break on Tiger Network and be right back. Tigers lead 46 to zero, 817 remaining fourth quarter. Lincoln. 
kicking unit for the Tigers, doing a nice job, not letting the majors go very far. Chris Chandler, once again, unable to get a lot of open field ahead of him. And with the Tigers up 46 to nothing, can start thinking a little bit about next week. And the Tigers going on the road for the first time in a couple of weeks as they face Swanee. Luke, what do you think this team is going to be looking for as they head to Tennessee? Well, I think many of the internal discussions are going to be much of the same. The same things that we talked about in our meeting this week with Coach Urban. It's another opportunity for the Tigers to go out and really take care of business themselves, to focus on and worry about themselves and not take the opponent at hand for granted. It's going to be a long trip, obviously making the journey to Tennessee, having to go up the mountain. It's an interesting environment. It's a different environment. And it's certainly one that you don't want to take for granted. So you have to anticipate that if the Tigers can take care of business, that they'll take care of their own business that they'll walk out of Tennessee walk out of Swanee with another victory considering the fact that the Tigers up in Swanee have started this season 0-5 currently trailing Barry College 24 to nothing but it's an opportunity for this team to continue to grow to work on new things to get some younger guys and backups into the game like we've seen here today and gain confidence in case of emergency down the line Third down. I think you're absolutely right on every point you made. A tough trip up to Tennessee, never an easy drive. And so Coach Urban and his staff will work hard to keep his team motivated, but probably won't have to work too hard as we've already seen how this year when facing opponents that this team knows that they can be, they have not let down at all. Up 46 to nothing here in their opening match of the year. They won 64 to zero over McAllister, not allowing a single point. And so really the Tigers playing at their level and not going down to face any competition. And really even against Barry and center, teams that were projected to finish higher in the conference this Tiger team just playing their game of football and not letting their opponent dictate their pace. That time a nice stop. A deflection there that will get the Tigers offense. Not get the Tigers offense. That was a first down. I think another thing that next weekend and even beyond that mm -hmm. offers this Tigers team is the opportunity to keep going out and playing complete football games. I think that they've certainly controlled this one and that they've played a complete game in terms of coming out on the offensive side of the ball, the defensive side of the ball, and making plays on special teams. But you have to say that they've left things out there at times, right? We saw them turn the ball over. We saw them miss a couple of extra, or er, excuse me, a couple of field goal opportunities. So there's more that this Tigers team can do, and I think they recognize that. And I think opportunities against teams like Swanee, and then in a couple of weeks against a team like Hendricks, are really valuable to play sharp football games ahead of competition like Bir Birmingham Southern, who likely is going to enter that competition unbeaten as well. I think that's a scary thought for opponents if the Tigers are not playing their best and they're still showing this type of output. But I agree with you in that there's definitely things that they can keep improving on, but that just goes to show how special of a year the Tigers could go on to have. They control their own destiny in the SAA, ranked 23rd by the AFCA and D3Football.com. And so if they continue to see a rise in those rankings and the wins keep on adding up, could be in for a special fall down here in San Antonio. Clay Patch and the Majors lining up to punt once again. The Majors just unable to get into Trinity's side of the field. And a really nice return here from Timmy Page, his second time returning a punt, replacing Chris Stewart. 
And Paige, a couple of punt returns already today. On the first one, we saw his ability to make some people miss, and that one showed some good straight line speed. But now it'll be interesting for the Tiger offense. We have a group of second stringers, third stringers out on the field. But we're at a position in the game where a couple of weeks ago with the first stringers against Barry, they really, really grinded it out, ran the ball, and ran the clock out. So it's going to be interesting to see what the Tigers opt to do here. If they take that same approach or if these, they give these guys the opportunity to show some, some potential right now. And that first play of the drive is a run from Gerald Daniels. He's brought Gerald down Gerald after Daniels. just getting back to the line of scrimmage. And so the clock does keep on ticking down to 5 minutes and 30 seconds. It is second down. The Millsaps Majors, a team that really did not look bad today, just unable to put it together offensively. And then their defense just out on the field for too long. You know, it's so hard to keep this Tigers offense in check. But a Millsaps team with plenty of talent, already winning an SAA game against Rhodes. So they'll be heading back to Jackson, Mississippi under second year head coach Isaac Carter with plenty to build on. Their slogan, hashtag eat crumbs. Coach Carter telling his team that they should never stop being hungry until they have succeeded in every possible way. They always have to keep eating and keep eating crumbs. So the Millsaps majors, young program. We've mentioned a lot of freshmen on the field today and the future will be bright down in Jackson, Mississippi. No doubt about that. As Daniels gets another carry here and he stopped shy of the first down marker so that'll bring up a fourth down we've seen the tigers go for it plenty of times on fourth down but this time ryan back coming to the sideline and they'll send eli gaiman out a name we have not talked about a lot and in an interview with gaiman earlier in the year after he won saa special teams player of the week we joked about how the team certainly doesn't want to see the punter on the field, but when he's called upon, he does a good job. And today, the Tigers have done a good job making sure we don't see a lot of Gaiman. But he is able to get rid of this punt and puts it out of bounds at about the 13. So a nice job from Gaiman. Yeah, Brian, great job by Gaiman there. A little low on the snap, but was able to both get that one off and pin Millsaps deep yet again. Probably the story of the game has been the fact, it's just been the field position game. The majors have been deep within their own territory to start almost every single one of their drives today. And on the other side, the Tigers, the defense has kept the majors pinned back. The punts haven't been all that successful in We've seen the Tigers start in Millsaps territory on a number of possessions today. And off to Jaden Horton. Mentioned going into today's game, the Tigers is one of 28 undefeated teams in Division Three, so they will keep that undefeated record intact. Additionally, just one of seven teams across the great state of Texas to be undefeated, and so they've held up their part. Now the other San Antonio school that's unbeaten, UTSA, plays later today at 5 against Rice at home. So if you're looking for something to do, you can head on out to the Alamo Dome and support the Roadrunners. Some great football being played here in the city of San Antonio. We'll take a quick break as there is an injury on the Millsap side. All appears to be okay as the Millsaps receiver was able to exit out on his own power, but Brady Davis sacked behind the backfield there. Been a tough afternoon for the Majors quarterbacks. First Mel Vendrick Johnson who started this game and now Brody Davis. 
just facing little time and a lot of pressure from this stout defensive front of the Tigers. Yeah, Brian, and I think one of the biggest, another one of the biggest factors today has been the Tigers' success just to take away everything. The majors early on in the game, as we talked about at the start of this half, were able to get a couple of runs towards the outside, get outside the tackle and break some off for five or six yards, which is obviously incredibly valuable. They had on that first drive a couple of short passes for five or six yards. And those are the little type of chunk plays that you need to put together, something that the Tiger offense does incredibly, incredibly well. But as this game progressed, Trinity were able to take those two things away and it left this Millsaps team with pretty much nothing off on the offensive side of the ball. And that pass thrown deep, just trying to make something happen, but it falls incomplete, and the punting unit will come on the field. This will allow us to rattle up some of the impressive stats that this Tiger defense is somehow going to even improve today. These averages are just incredible. They've allowed a second best in the country, just 179 yards per game. And today's afternoon, they've allowed just 56 yards. Their rushing defense comes in at number three in the country, allowing just 38 rushing yards per game. They've allowed 22 today, so that average will be going down. They've allowed just 6.7 points per game, also second best in Division Three. If they can keep that zero on the scoreboard, that will also be going down. Just some incredible performances from this Tigers defense that does not let up. The Tigers have allowed just six first downs, and so we'll have to see how Delaware Valley is doing in their game today, but they came in tied with them for the fewest first downs allowed in the country, just 43. And so they've allowed just six first downs. A magnificent showing for the Tigers' defense. And all things considered, Brian, we talk about those games earlier in the year, those first two weeks out against McAllister, against TLU, and again here today, where the Tigers get so many backups into the game, second stringers, third stringers, and even with those players in the game that don't have as much experience on the field this year, they've been putting up these stats and they've been maintaining these rankings amongst some of the best teams in the country in these respective categories. Second down. On the 48. Last week, the Tigers were able to get the ball to 10 different receivers, and they've done so once again today, just filling up the box score. Tucker Horn at quarterback started this game, threw for 221 yards and had three touchdowns. Will Cheney then replaced him and played a couple of drives, which resulted in 36 yards of passing with that one touchdown completion to Ethan Boyer. Ryan back, the third quarterback that we've seen for the Tigers in today. And then on the ground, it has been all about Winston Hutchison. On 19 carries, he had 152 rushing yards and that long 70-yard touchdown to open this game. And you knew from that moment that the Tigers were going to have a big day as he broke through with that 70-yard run. On the receiving end, mention that 10 Tiger receivers have com have caught a pass today. Austin Burtness leads the way with four receptions, 66 yards, and a touchdown. Hutchison also added a touchdown reception himself, as did Ryan Merrifield and Ethan Boyer, who we mentioned caught that pass from Cheney. And that run there from Jernigan will be the final play of the game, it appears as he gets a first down, but the clock will tick down to zero, and the Tiger fans on their feet here in San Antonio. A big win for the Tigers, 46 to nothing over their SAA rival, the Millsaps College Majors. Luke, what are your reactions to this win that keeps the Tigers undefeated? I think it really rung true today that when the Tigers focus on themselves, are sharp, take care of their own business, that more often than not, they can come out on top. That it's not about who they line up against, it's about themselves and taking care of business on the offense side of the ball, on the defensive side of the ball, and 
on special teams, which again has proved to be such a massive, massive part of this team's success this year. They use special teams to put themselves in great field position, time in and time out, but there's also areas of the game that they can improve in special teams specifically. Having a valuable field goal kicker who can come on from 30, 40 yards out and knock knock the ball through the uprights consistently is more than likely going to prove valuable as the Tigers move down the stretch. So that's going to be an area to keep to keep our eyes on as the Tigers move forward this year, considering the fact that a couple of field goals were missed by the Tigers starter, P.J. Hensley, today. But beyond that, you have to admit that the Tigers played a very complete game in every facet and were incredibly impressive. Yeah, just an absolutely great performance from the Tigers in every facet. I think you're right that when these games do get closer as the year continues, they're going to want to figure out their field goal situation. But it does no harm today as they're able to get the 46 to nothing victory over Millsaps, over 500 yards of offense the Tigers were able to put up and holding Millsaps to under 100 yards. Thank you so much to all the students working hard in the control room and on camera. Seth, Elizabeth, Sophia, John, and Lourdes. We appreciate all that you do to make this broadcast possible. And thank you to Ryan and Josh for the hard work and letting this broadcast go on air. For Luke Terry, I'm Brian Yanselson. Have a wonderful Saturday afternoon.